Greetings all, welcome back to the channel. Y'all remember this thing, right? This is the Sony STR-DB840 that I couldn't fix. Last night, I couldn't sleep, so what I did was I got this beast out again and I decided I would play around with it and now that I've got a scope, I would try and figure out exactly where the signal was getting lost in this unit. And I've got some updates that may be worth me doing a video on, so I'm going to do that now. So, first of all, you'll remember the last video I did on this receiver, it was going into protection mode every single time. And I'm going to tell you exactly what that was first. Basically, you've got these big white resistor packs down in there. I don't know if you can see it too well. Ribbon cables in the way. Right down in there. And you see those metal posts sticking out? Well, those can be used as, as test points. Basically what I did was, I measured each of those, and I found that there was a bunch of DC voltage on one of them. Came to find out, these big pre-drivers here, these ones that run hot and burn up all the uh, components around them, one of them had failed and was dumping DC voltage into, into the output of, of one channel. So, I don't know if you can see it too well, way back in there, there is one missing. And the one that's missing is the one that failed. So, as of right now, this receiver turns on again. And it works, well, kind of the way it did before I started working on it. So, what did I end up doing with the oscilloscope that I found out what the problem is? Well, basically the problem is on the auxiliary switching board. See, going by the block diagram, I was able to find out that uh, the auxiliary switching board, which is this one right here, this is the last place the signal goes before going into the volume control and off to the power amp. And the power amp is working on this unit. Now, how do I know that? Well, see, I felt under here. We've got these solder joints under here for this connector. And I found that when I was touching those solder joints, I got a loud buzzing out of the outputs, out of the speakers. So that's how I know the power amp is working. That's how I know everything down here is working. These are the start of the AD or DA converters or whatever. So all that stuff is working all the way to the power output. So, or all, or all the way to the speaker output, I mean. So with that in mind, I took the scope and I took this board. What I did was I had it installed properly. Let's see if I can do this. So basically it was running just like this and I took the scope and I measured right down in here. You can see all these little resistors and capacitors down here, the surface mount ones. Basically I checked each of these to see where the signal was stopping and I found out where the signal was stopping. The signal is stopping, Let's see if I can show you. The signal is going into each one of these op amps and is not coming back out. That's the problem. I've checked the voltages on each of these. I'm getting minus 15 and plus 15 exactly as I should be. Those are the B plus and B minus. So those are working. I can tell you that these ones up here are working. These are the same op amps. But uh, what these ones are for is they're responsible for the 5.1 channel input. So those are working, all three of them. And I'm able to get a signal from the uh, 5.1 channel input all the way down to these off amps down here. Now, during my testing, I found that the signal was, Let's see if I can set this up again. Now, I thought it was suspicious. I checked all these capacitors here. These are where the signal goes after leaving these chips, and I got nothing on those. So, 
my next thought and your next thought possibly was check the muting circuit. What's going on with that? Is that possibly failed? Well, it does not appear that the muting circuit has failed. This is the muting circuit down here. What you've got are these dual diode packs. I'm pointing at one right there. Actually, this is probably easier to do on the schematic, so let's go over to the main computer with that. That's basically why it's set up where it is. I wanted access to the main computer and schematics without uh, having to uh, screw around too much with the printer. So, let's see if I can set you up here. Okay, this is one of those op amps right here. So, basically what I did with the scope was, I came in, I tested this resistor on both sides. I got a signal on both sides. Now there are six channels like this, so I'm just using this as a reference. I checked most of them. So, I got signal on both sides of R80. I got signal down here at, at the one pin of C1521. And I got signal down here, which means it's going all the way into this hop amp. Now the problem is, I've got no signal coming out of pin one here. Nothing, nothing whatsoever. And uh, see if I can show you here. C1554, that's one of those electrolytics coming out of that board. If I'm making any sense here. C1554 is one of these right here. And I've got no signal there. Now the muting circuit is just right there in the center of your screen, right here. So you've got these double diode packs here. What happens is, if we go all the way back along this line, we find the muting, the muting circuit coming up to here. And this is Q1507, I've checked this. Now what's supposed to happen is when you turn the muting on, it's supposed to invert. What it does is it, is it changes the negative 15.2 to positive 15.2. And what happens is, see if I can set you back up here. Oh, we'll just pick one of these at random here. Ah, this is hard to do with my gimbal. Let's do it like this. Okay, so these are the muting circuits. This is one of the muting circuits right here. So basically, when this voltage is negative, negative 15 volts, it basically goes no further than this diode pack because diodes only go one way. But when it goes positive, then the, then the uh, 15 volts can get through to our 1595 and 1594, and it turns on these transistors down here, which then shorts the signal to ground. Now, as near as I can tell, I can't tell for sure because of the way this dang receiver is laid out, these transistors all appear to be working. I don't know for sure that they are working. I can't test these voltages here in normal operation because, well, look where those transistors are. They're right down by this connector and I just cannot get access to any of these to check the voltages. So, basically, what it comes down to on this receiver is either these three op amps are fried or these muting transistors are turning on all the time. Now, I don't believe they're turning on all the time because like I said, I've checked that Q1507, the inverter, and I found that it's working properly. So it's, in, it's inverting to positive 15 volts on the output for the muting the way it should be. So, what's next for this unit now that I know exactly where the problem is? Well, I don't know exactly. What I should really do is replace all three of these op amps, but I don't really want to do that on this receiver. What I would really like to do is I would like to find another one of these to 
to dig the auxiliary switching board out so I can swap it into this receiver to see if that fixes the problem. And if it does, where is the signal going and how is it working and whatnot. So yeah, I did find one of these on eBay from a 940. It's from a guy in England or something like that. He wants something like 40 bucks shipped for it. And I'm going to tell you right now, that's not going to happen either because I don't want to spend that kind of money on a receiver that uh, I'm not particularly interested in anymore. So, here's what we know for sure about this receiver. Let's go back to it. Here's what I know for sure about this receiver. Everything works except for the auxiliary switching board. At least everything appears to work. This digital board is working, as far as I can tell. I'm getting input switching properly working to the auxiliary switching board. I'm able to drive a signal into the CD input and have that signal show up at all those places on the auxiliary switching board I talked about. So yeah, when I fire in the test tones on the test, uh, on the, uh, you know, the thing, when you go into test mode on this, it puts out a one kilohertz signal on all six outputs. I find that uh, when I come around back here and I test all six channels, that signal is there. It's completely present at all six channels everywhere until it goes into the op amps and that's where it gets lost and it's the same thing with the uh, inputs i'm able to select between different inputs just fine and the signal will show up at each at all three of these op amps it's just not making it past the op amps so yeah i think if i replace this switching board here this thing would work again that's where i think this is heading if I can ever find another one of these for parts, maybe I can try that out sometime. I don't know. I'm really not interested in putting any more money into this one. Because, uh, well, it's, it's a $20 receiver. I'm not really that keen on going much further with it. I'd rather use it for parts or use something else for parts. And But yeah, as far as I'm concerned, I've gotten to the bottom of this mystery now. It's just, uh, yeah, when it comes to soldering stuff like this, like I can get these chips for about 18 bucks, but uh, I don't particularly like soldering around the surface mount stuff that much. So yeah, I'm afraid this is probably where it ends for this receiver, but at least I've got enough information for you to do this update video. So yeah. This thing is basically fully working except for the audio can't make it to the volume knob. What I could do in the future is I could force a signal directly through the volume control and into the power amps and use it that way. But uh, yeah, we've got a burned out pre-driver IC for the surround channels now because I swapped in the surround channel output for the main left and right. And yeah, we've got three op amps that appear to be dead on the switching, on the auxiliary switching board. We've still got half a dozen screws missing out of the back panel. So, yeah, I think I'm done with this receiver, but uh, I just wanted to put out this video just so you guys know exactly what I found in my moment of uh, not being able to sleep last night and uh, going into this with the oscilloscope. Basically, yeah, that's where we're at. So, I guess that's going to be it for today, guys. See you next time. Take care.